Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Father, we thank you for each person listening today, Lord. We just pray that we would... um, Lay aside all of our cares, Lord. You're the, you're the one big enough to take care of our cares anyway. So we, we pray, Lord, you'd help us to lay our cares at your feet. Mm-hmm. Lord, to put our eyes and our attention to you this morning. And we pray that you use Pastor Izzy now to, uh, to encourage your people. Lord, you be the shepherd and let us be the sheep. We ask that now in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, guys. Would you grab your Bibles and turn to 1 Corinthians? And I'm going to put my glasses back on because there's someone's windshield out there is glaring. So... Uh, you that don't have to face that way don't recognize. So one of the guys came, sat up here, and goes, oh, this is a good view you have, Pastor. Why do you wear sunglasses? I said, just wait till the cars get here, and uh, you find out. But you guys have the better view, I think, looking at that wallpaper, you know. I mean, we cleaned the windows for you, so it's all ready for our guests to enjoy. So this morning, we get the privilege of, of kicking off our study in the book of 1 Corinthians. Okay, this is, a, this is an epistle, a letter that Paul the Apostle was writing to the church at Corinth. Now, for those of you that know um, some Bible you know, history, a little bit about the area, Corinth was a port city that in its day was, it, it was like about the third, I believe, uh, in size of Roman power population, so to speak. I mean, you had Rome... Um, Philippi was supposed to be like the second largest Roman inhabited city and then Corinth following close behind. But Corinth being on a port, a lot of sailors coming in, going out, you know, they, they, they had um, situations with uh, what we call brothels and, you know, pubs and drinking. And, and in the day, if you were to call someone a Corinthian back then, I don't actually know the right way to say this, but it was not a compliment. It was like saying you lost Vegasite or something. I don't know. But really, in the most corruptest idea of the form of, you know, all the sin that goes on, you know, that that was their, that was, they were just known. They were known around the world as basically, we would say, the Las Vegas of of the ancient world. The place to go, what have parties, and you know what happens in Corinth stays in Corinth, I guess, or didn't really stay in Corinth because it actually spread through the through the shipping lanes because of Corinth. So Corinth actually had a notoriety, but not for good. Okay, and interestingly enough, to me, uh, what I really like about this is I know some of you. Why do you talk about the background of the city? But you have to understand if you understand that it's a very would you call that a spiritually bright place? You know, like, hey, let's go there. It's like spiritual revivals happening. Let's go hang out in the darkness, you know, with all the sin. And, but, but in darkness, it's amazing to me that the Lord put a church to be a light, a group of believers to, to shine for him. You know? And, you know, the ironic thing is, is that when it's really dark, all you need is like just a little bit of light, and it makes such a difference. Last night, our, our dear sister Mo, she, she invited me to Halua Loa. To, she, has a, um, she does the therapy massage for a lot of the athletes. And she said, oh, I saw on your post that you fixed Jan's oven and you were in this weird position. I said, that's to say the least. I, I had to reach in the drawer under the oven where the, where the power line went down to connect to the little junction box. But it's only this big. So I could get my head in, but I had to like squeeze my ears past and I had to reach in, and I couldn't see what I was doing. I had my head turned sideways, and I had to blindly wire the wire nuts onto the, from the stove into the power supply. And it wasn't going so smooth. You know, like the one wire I start to tighten, and, the, and it had two wires connected together with one of those little crimpons, and, it, and one of them breaks off, of course. So then you're like, oh, great. Now I have to cut the wire, strip that wire, Try to figure out how to reconnect that one to the other one, plus add the other two that were there. So four, four wires. I know this sounds really easy to most people, but try to put four wires into one wire nut when you're at the full length of your reach and you can barely reach and your head's like this 
and you're arched up into a little groove and you're laying on your belly on the floor. And I'm trying to get in in there and I'm just praying, oh Lord, just, just help me. Just. And Mo says, she, she saw the post that my wife wrote and she said, you might need help tomorrow. I have a feeling, you know, because Jam wrote, she was rubbing my back. I was like, honey, my back is cramping. I'm st-. But I got my head in this hole and I'm stuck. And so I'm like, rub right there, right, yeah, down, okay. Oh. And I'm like trying to, I'm trying to suck it up and get it done. I get the one wire nut on those four wires and I still have another two pair to go. And I'm like, I got to get out. I'm going claustrophobic. My head is feeling like, you know, there's no air in this little cupboard. And uh, I, I mean, when I say little, I mean it's a drawer that we pulled out. And unfortunately, the track broke when we pulled it out. So there's another job, you know. Gotta, it's like, you, you know how having an old house, it's like, it's a full-time job to just maintenance, never stop. So, so I'm like, oh. And Mo says, come up to the clinic. Well, I went up. She worked on my back. And I was like, thank you, Mo. But, but she said, come, and it was, it was already late. So when I got up there, it was, it w- I got in before it was dark. But if you've ever been up Hulualoa at night, after the, after the um, you know, sun sets and it gets dark, when we, by the time we come out, it was like 8 o'clock, it was black. And I'm like, uh, you know, and Mo's, Mo's been there, but she's like walking like little steps. And I'm thinking, uh, so I go and I have on my, on my keys, where'd they go? Oh, toss me that real quick. So on my keys, I have this really big light. Now, you guys will laugh, but it, I, I know it's so small, but it's like one of these ones made to like, it barely glows, but it, but it can let you see the keyhole on the car door. Because have you ever had that trouble? You know, in the dark, trying to get the ski in this little hole and you cannot see? That's all you, it's amazing that a little bit of light, this is what I want to point out, a little bit of light in a lot of dark makes it like you can see. I was able to light the path. I didn't even know this would work. I thought this was just for getting the key in the hole on the car. And I'm like lighting a, a circle about this big. I'm holding up here. I'm going, Mo, I got us. Step next to me. Come on. And then we, we go out to the car. And I'm thinking, wow, it's such a small light. But when it's real dark, it's amazing how just a little light can light the way. And Corinth spiritually was like dark Kalualoa, no street lights. I mean, spiritually, they were hurting. And, and the Lord put this little church of believers in this city port where all the sin was going on. And he, God had a plan to use these people, a plan to, to let them be a light to their community. And so Paul, now, if you know anything about the church of Corinth, did it have all like perfect people and super bright lights? No. These were a lot of new converts. A lot of problems came from a lot of diverse backgrounds. And Paul has to actually write this letter to, to deal. The main reason he's writing is to address a lot of the problems that are going on. He hears about, you know, adulteries and fornications going on in the church. And they're saying it's okay. You know, they come, I mean, they're in this free love society kind of thing. And, and he's going, but that's not to be named in the church. That could be what, what they're doing in the brothel down the street, but that's not for the church. And so he's got to deal with some of these situations. But I want to show you this morning, before we get to the words that he speaks to them about the, the problems, he leads off with something that is probably, probably read past the most and unfortunately overlooked because it has the most power. I don't think the Apostle Paul was... When in, his, in his greeting alone, there is more theological soundness and, and strengthening. You've got to remember, these are new Christians, weak, little lights. But they need, they need some encouraging words to help them to shine bright in that dark place. And so the Lord has Paul, inspired by the Holy Ghost, write these words. Let's look at this together. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, we, we read here in verse 1, it says, Paul... An apostle, call, called an apostle, he says, by Jesus Christ, I'm sorry, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, my eyes haven't quite focused yet, go there, he says, by the will of God. Now, this is one of the things Paul's intros to, I don't know, out of 
12 of the epistles we have from him. Some guys debate 13. They say he, he collaborated on Hebrews, but I mean, it's a pretty good amount. 12 out of 27 books of the New Testament go to this guy. But he got a lot of he headache. How, how come you get to be the apostle? Who, you know, who made you a guy that's speaking for, for God? And you know what he, his answer was? He didn't say, oh, um, this church organization over here gave me one certificate and now I'm, you know, a preacher. He said, the one who gave him the nod was who? God, he says right here. By the will of God, I was made an apostle of Jesus Christ. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.